Hey guys, we are going to be working on, as soon as the screen turns white, okay, we're going to be working on the math video notes for Tuesday. Today is September 22nd. We're going to be multiplying three digit numbers, which in the packet is pages 36 through 37. And then we're going to be doing some more area model stuff. So if we look, page 36 and 37 is what we call a modeled and guided practice. Basically, the premise of it is something that we could work with and it gives you examples. Or technically, you could actually do it on your own. Uh, that's what the guided, modeled and guided instruction means. It's showing you exactly how to do it. Okay, it says read the problem below, then explore different ways to multiply a three-digit number by two-digit number. So, it says there are 128 pins in a full box. How many pins are in 35 full boxes? So, the model it right here means that this is one way we can work the problem. One way we can work the problem is by using an actual area model. So, when we use the area model, you have to sketch a rectangle with dimensions of 128 by 35. What that means is you have to draw the rectangle or for us you can draw a box. It doesn't have to look like this. Our boxes because there's three so that would be the hundred, that would be the tens place, this would be the ones place. Our boxes can look like this. So you would just do 100, 20, and then 8 and then 30, and then 5. You just have to make them large enough so that you have room to fit your numbers in. I write relatively small, so my boxes don't have to be as large, but for I realize with most fifth graders, you need a bigger box. But it doesn't have to show this big of a difference between the sizes. Now, what you do is you have to take 128 and you have to break it apart. Basically you're doing your expanded form. You have one 100, two tens, and one eight. So that would be 100 plus 20 plus eight. 35, you have three tens and one five. So that would be 30 plus five. Then you fill in your spaces and then you just multiply. 30 times 100 is 3,000. 30 times 20 is 600, 30 times 8 is 240. Then we go down here, 5 times 100 is 500, 5 times 20 is 100, and then 5 times 8 is 40. Now what we do is we add the partial products. The first row together, you have 3,000 plus 6,000 plus 4, sorry, 240 equals 800 Okay, it equals 3,840. Your second row is 500 plus 100 plus 40, which equals 640. Then you just add those together, and you get 4,480. So that's your area model. What I would have probably done is I would have came up here and did it beside each other like this because you are less likely to make a mistake when adding when you do it vertically. This is horizontal. It's laying flat. You have less error, like less margin for error doing it like this. And I'll do the same thing for this one and then just add them together. Alright, another model it would be doing the distributive property to find the partial products and then add them. I personally don't care for this model myself because it gets confusing, but this is a method. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we are going to, you're going to, <coughs> I'm sorry, we're going to look at what is on in front of us, this whole I just totally took the paper. This, and we're going to answer the questions on page 37. So let's look at it. Model it. Not model it. I'm looking at that paper right now. Okay. 
Now, the question says, I'm going I'm to leave this up here. The question says, why is the area model divided into six sections? Why is this area model divided into six? six sections. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six. Why is this area model divided into six sections? Why would it be? It's divided into six sections to show a partial product because each section shows a partial product. There are six partial products, so there are six sections. Now if you need to, pause the video and write your answer. Number two, why is the area model divided into six sections? Because each section shows a partial product. There are six partial products, so there are six sections. Pause your video to write your answer. Number three asks, how do the three partial products in each multiplication equation in the second model relate to the three sections in each row of the area model. So you're looking right here. How do these partial products relate to the area model up here? How do they relate? Think about it. Okay. Each, once again, if you need to pause the video to write this down, because I know different people write at different speeds, so for me, it's just going to be easier for me to tell you to pause it, write, and then restart it. So how do the three partial products in each multiplication equation in the second model it relate to the three sections in the row of the area model? Well, each partial product in an equation is the same as a partial product in one section of each row of the area model. What that means is if you look down at the multiplication when they did partial product, each one of those partial products matches one of the sections in the area model. That's all they're saying. So pause the video to work the problems out. Or to write, I'm sorry. Number four says, would the product change if 30 and 5, right here, on the left side of the model were changed to 20, 10, and 5. So instead of having a 3 by 2, you would have a 3 by 3, with 1 being 20, 10, and 5. Would that change anything? Think about it. When we're over here, the numbers have to add up to whatever this is, because 3, 30 plus 5 is 35, 100 plus 20 plus 8 equals 128, so that equals. So think about it. If they had a 10, a 20, and a 5, would there be a difference? Would it, on the left side, would it change? Okay, this is pretty long, so you will have to pause it. It wouldn't change. What would change would be the answers inside of the model. Instead of a partial product of 3,000, you would have a partial product of 2,000 and 1,000. But they both equal 3,000 when you add them together. Instead of 600, you would have 400 and 200. Instead of 240, you would have 160 and 80. The sum of all the partial products would still be the same. Sorry, I was showing you five. Okay, pause the video and just copy this down. Now, guys, I will remind you that when I look over this, I will be looking at pages to make sure that you have written. And I will say this, if I cannot read your handwriting, that tells me that you didn't put care into the work. And... I can't grade it if I can't read it. That's just a basic principle for me. So please, don't rush and be sloppy. Write it down. It takes a few minutes. Just write your answer down, okay? 
right? Number five says list two different ways you could break up the factors in 239 times 64 to find the product. Explain why both ways could have the same product. Well, I'm going to scoot this in a little bit. For some reason, I didn't realize I wrote this small. Okay, the first one is I'm going to break it up by saying 200 plus 30 plus 9. That's the easiest way to do it. And then I'm going to go 60 plus 4. The second way I'm going to do it is I'm just going to break the 200 down. 100 plus 100 plus 30 plus 9. And then I'm going to go 50 plus 10 plus 4. Now, just like I said before, as long as the sum of the numbers equal the factor, what that means, like right over here, here's one box, and it's going to have, I'm oh, sorry, I'm going to have this right here. Okay, so in 64, so I have 200, 30, and then 9, and then 60, and 4. Okay, 200 plus 30 plus 9 is 239. 60 plus 4 is 64. Now if I come right down here, and I need 4 on top, 3 on the side. Alright, if I come over here and do the same thing with the new numbers that they gave me. That's 3. Okay, so I have 100 plus 100 plus 30 plus 9, and then 50, 10, and 4. 100 and 100 make 200, plus 30 and 9 make 30, 239. 50 plus 10 is 60, plus 4 is 64. So as long as the sum of these numbers right here equals the factor that they represent, factor is over here, you can find all the partial products. The partial products will add up to the same product. So as long as the sum of the numbers on the side are equal to the product, you can do that. So pause your video and write it down. All right, it says use what you've learned on multiplication numbers to solve this problem. Show your work on a separate sheet of paper. Okay, I didn't have a separate sheet of paper. Well, I probably did, but I didn't want to mess with it. So I worked my problem down here. You could probably use this space over here to do the same thing. So it says a bookshelf at the library holds 156, 156 books. There are 15 bookshelves in the children's section. How many children's books can the library place on the bookshelf? Break it up into your area model. So break 156 into 150 and 6, 15 into 10 and 5, and then you work your problem out. Your answer should come up to 2,340 book books. Okay, show me your work. Pause it if you need to. So now, and that came along with my paper. And now what we're doing is we're going to be working with now we're going to be working with the area model that looks like this. Now this is your area model. Sorry, I'm thinking I'm, I'm trying to make sure that I'm doing the right thing, and I am. It just looks the papers got put in the wrong order. Okay, so with the area model, what's going to happen is we have eight problems, you, you know, six problems on here. I'm going to do three of them with you, and you're going to be required to do the other three. So the three that I'm doing are the odds. So we're going to be doing the odds together, and you are going to be responsible. Responsible for completing the evens. So that's 6, 8, and 10. Okay, I have 95 plus 25. What we do is we break it up to 90, 
and then 5. Okay, and then the 25 breaks up into 20 and 5. And to be honest, if you wanted to go ahead and break the numbers up first and then go back and do the work, that's fine with me. It's just however you want to do it. So now we multiply. 2 times 9 is 18, and then 2 zeros. Okay, 5 times 2 is 10, add a 0. 5 times 9 is 45, and 1 0. 5 times 5 is 25. Now we add it all together. And like I said before, my, how my brain works, I have to put things in order from least to gra from greatest to least when I add. So that's why I'm not. I didn't do my usual order. Uh, so that's five, seven, eight, four is twelve plus one is thirteen. Write my three, carry my one, and your answer is two thousand three hundred seventy-five. That is your answer. Now, I have 52 times 12. Break up the 52 into 50 and 2. 12 breaks up into 10 and 2. Now, just multiply. 50 times 10 is 500. 10 times 2 is 20. 500, not 500, 2 times 50 is 100, 2 times 2 is 4. So now all you do is add them together, you line them up, and you add 4, 2, 6, 624. Okay, number 9. 62 times 24, uh, my 60, then my 2, my 20, then my 4. 2 times 6 is 12, add my two zeros. 2 times 20 is 40. 4 times 6 is 24 with one zero. 4 times 2 is 8. So 1,200 plus 240 plus 40, plus 8. So 8, 8, 4, 1. 1,488. And you can see I circle my answers because that means I can directly, it tells the teacher, which is me, what my answer directly is, and it's a good habit to start. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause the video and then I'm going to come no we can do this okay remember you have your practice and problem solving for lesson 5 page 42 and then you have more area model problems there's five like five six seven eight nine ten there's six of them right there so you have your practice and problem solving for Tuesday I hope you all have a good afternoon good evening and I will see y'all later.